Another consideration of part design is that many applications require different performance and appearance properties from the same part. As a result, companies will often use an excessive amount of inferior material to satisfy everything. When cycle time is critical to the success of a program, one, mat one material just won't be the solution. In many cases, a second material can be incorporated to improve appearance, strength, or durability of a product. We'll talk more about this in the next few slides. Let's discuss some cycle time reduction methods. We're going to talk specifically about inserts, double shot molding, in mold labeling, and assembly. Please note that when we look at cycle time reduction, we need to look at the entire picture. What we imply is how long it will take to make the end product. In particular, if you're manufacturing an entire assembly or product with multiple plastic parts. This is uh, the point of this slide. Sometimes features can be inserted into the mold. Instead of designing thick bosses which increase cycle time and differential shrinkage, you can use a threaded insert. Also, instead of increasing wall thickness for strength and durability, you might want to consider inserting a metal plate or small insert. Inserts can be made of other materials such as plastic, graphite, ceramic, and even more exotic materials such as ferrite if you want magnetic properties. Some molders save money by incorporating plastic inserts produced by less expensive polymers or sometimes even regrind. Overmolded inserts are added by molding polymer over the insert Along with part thickness reduction, inserts can be cooled prior to insertion, further reducing the cycle time. Also, after molding, inserts can be added through various processes such as welding and assembly. Ultrasonic welders are commonplace and are usually used to apply inserts such as threads or reinforcements. This is very common with injection molding, especially when disassembly is critical to your application. One of the easiest ways to incorporate inserts is to use a snap fit assembly. This will allow you to incorporate many features into an application by simply snapping a couple of parts together. In some cases, we use mold technology and specialized tooling to get the end result. In this example, we're using a rotary mold to mold toothbrushes using two different materials. We'll talk about this in the next slide. Here's how it works. We have two identical cores with different cavities. We mold cavity number one, the mold rotates, and then we overmold with cavity number two. You'll find many automotive and consumer applications that uh, incorporate this type of technology. Many of your dashboard components, such as the two material dials and, and buttons, use uh, similar type processes. In many of these applications, the entire mold rotates on a rotating or rotary pattern. Here's another example of two-component molding. This is called the core back method. Variations of this process have been used for years in automotive and lens applications. Although this method has been uh, around for quite some time, I recently read an article stating this technique is a new technology. Uh, not true. You should know that with two component manufacturing, we have three methods and variations of each of these methods. The first two are called rotary core and core back methods, which you've just seen. The other side to side method is not shown here since it doesn't reduce the overall cycle time. It's not within the scope of uh, my presentation, but I'd be happy to discuss it with you if you're considering any future uh, two component applications. In mold labeling is an area of growth in the plastics industry. Uh, for example, the label or paint is applied. This, this is also in mold painting for a lot of automotive applications, whereby the mold is closed, the part is molded, the mold is opened, and then the part is again removed. I see a lot of uh, growth potential in this area because you can design parts using an, inf an infinite number of colors, uh, by simply printing on the label. 
this in combination with texture and even using multi-materials can give a designer all kinds of creative design latitude when designing the part for manufacturability and optimum cycle time. The advantages are countless and include improved appearance. They can be used virtually with any plastic material and this reduces secondary operations. Assembly is a major consideration with respect to uh, part design for cycle time reduction, but we should first make an important point. Be sure to review all of the parts that go into an assembly and then design the part features accordingly. For example, years ago I was involved in a vacuum cleaner and most of the features used mechanical fasteners. The labor to insert the fasteners and assemble the machine was quite involved. It took about 43 people to put this machine together. When we did a redesign, we used snap fits and some welding was used and the end result was less in assembly rejects and it only took about seven people to assemble the new machine. In general, when you design for the assembly of multi-material parts, always consider the need for disassembly. In the case of the vacuum cleaner I just mentioned, we had to ensure the product can be easily serviced when necessary. In such cases, always avoid irreversible fasteners such as this push-on nut. Such fasteners are quick and easy to assemble but are nearly impossible to disassemble without destroying the post. Using any type of non-removable snap fit can greatly reduce your ability to disassemble parts in the future. Few things are more aggravating to the customer than a component that looks like it can be disassembled only to find out that the product is destroyed in the process. Adhesives are one of the most time-consuming methods of assembly. Employees never like to work with solvents and adhesives as they tend to have fumes and are often very messy. I would avoid them if possible. Whenever you can avoid plating, you should. The plating environment is very toxic and in the end the product is often virtually impossible to recycle. When two components are properly welded, the polymer chains are entangled at the interface. Ultrasonic welding is a great method for quickly assembling plastic parts, but this can be a disaster if you ever need to disassemble the application. If you have a potential for high volume part requirements, you should consider multi-cavity molds. Whenever you're designing for multi-cavity use, uh, this will reduce effective cycle time, it will, will increase the potential for production capability, and it also creates a buffer if one of the uh, cavities gets uh, damaged during production. When designing multi-cavity molds, avoid sprue gates, avoid excessive side actions, and simplify cooling as much as possible. To conclude this presentation, a designer should not only look at the many avenues possible to reduce cycle time of the mold, uh, this will not only minimize the cycle time, but it will allow you to better prepare if higher production demands are necessary in the future. Also, part design and mold design work hand in hand, so it's a good idea to master both. I'd like to take a moment to bring to your attention a special offer being provided to those of you who have attended this uh, webinar. We'll be offering a 20% discount to one of our most popular training packages called the Design Engineering Package. Um, and this package includes things like our entire part design series, mold design series, uh, information on plastic materials, information on injection molding. Uh, Again, this is our most popular uh, product and I think you would uh, really enjoy it. There's quite a bit of training here. We're probably looking at uh, 25 hours of uh, online training.